That's crazy. That's awesome. This is a full auto bell fed pellet gun, which means a couple things. First of all, it's not a firearm, which means you can order it online and have it shipped straight to your house. I've got a link in the video description in case you're interested in doing so. It also means it runs on air. 3,000 PSI of air, as a matter of fact. How do I get 3,000 PSI into this tank? My preference is to use a transfer tank like this one that holds 4,500 PSI. Between its larger size and its higher fill pressure, I can top this tank off many, many, many times before I need to top this tank off. Of course, how do I get 4,500 PSI of air into this? Is it turtles all the way down? Well, most scuba shops are not set up to do fills up to 4,500 PSI, and some paintball and airsoft places might fill this, but they might not. Of course, you might not be near any of those, so what do you do? When I had to answer this question for myself about a year and a half ago, this was the most economical solution. It's a standard shop compressor, which I already owned, feeding a booster compressor. It's literally called the shoebox compressor. It takes 135 PSI output and smashes it many times into a 4,500 PSI output. It's about $1,300 for this setup, which was much cheaper than the three to $5,000 I might've had to pay to get an in-home compressor that would do 4,500 PSI. One of the big drawbacks of this setup is it takes a very long time to fill a tank all day. In fact, it could take more than one day to fill one of those big transfer tanks from empty. But Air Venturi came to the rescue. Now for the same $1,300 you might invest in a setup like this, you can get this. It's the Air Venturi compressor. It goes to 4,500 PSI and it'll fill transfer tanks in minutes instead of the hours that I need to fill them with this setup. It's water cooled so you can run it hard all day long and you don't have to worry about it overheating. And it's very simple to set up and very simple to operate. And that's why it's coming up next on Twang and Bang. I don't ordinarily show the unboxing of products, but the way Air Venturi packages this compressor is as much a feature as anything. They want to make sure your unit arrives undamaged and ready for a lifetime of use. The half-inch thick cushioned cardboard box is reinforced on all edges and closed with four nylon straps that I've already removed. Built-in handles make its 88-pound total weight a bit more manageable for one strong person, though Air Venturi rightfully recommends you get a friend to help you move it around if possible. Removing the lid reveals another three-quarters inches of foam padding on all six sides. This padding easily slips out so you don't have to fight the box getting the compressor out by its two smartly placed handles. The compressor ships with a small parts kit including a few fill whip adapters, a test plug, replacement air filter, seals and gaskets, the release valve knob, as well as a vent that you must install in the oil fill port of the reservoir. The compressor is water-cooled and lubricated with 5W30 motor oil. Both fill ports are hidden behind panels that are removed with a Phillips head screwdriver, which is the only tool you'll need for assembly. The cooling system takes about 5 quarts of water, and I recommend you use distilled water to protect the seals and other parts from scaling due to minerals or other hard chemicals that might be in your tap. Fill right to the shoulder and screw the cap on tightly. The owner's manual says you'll need about one-third quart of oil, but it took half a quart to bring this reservoir level up to the fill mark. I synthetic oil is that's typically less likely to gum up sitting in an unused compressor, but conventional motor oil is fine too. Once filled, screw in the oil vent hand tight, install the release valve knob, replace the panels, and the compressor is ready for its 10 minute break in run. This is your first chance to develop the habit of turning on the cooling system first and waiting until you hear it kick in before turning on the compressor. The release valve should be closed with nothing on the end of the fill whip. Every few minutes, open the release valve to bleed out condensation and oil left over from a assembly. You'll see the temperature gauge increase as the compressor runs. Everything is fine as long as that stays below 95 degrees Celsius, at which point it should shut itself off. That would either take a lot of big fills in a row or leaving the compressor in direct sunlight while running it to get there, but it's good to keep your eye on the gauge nonetheless. Something that's not in the manual that I recommend doing before filling your first tank is a test of the auto shutoff. Air Venturi tests this before sending it out the door, but it's not a bad idea to double check it after shipping. Simply insert the test plug into the end of the fill whip. Set the auto shutoff to 4500 PSI. Turn on the cooling system, then the compressor. 
you should see the pressure gauge rising steadily until the set pressure is achieved, at which point the compressor should shut itself off. Now you're ready to do your first fill. One of the things the owner's manual recommends is that you bring the pressure of the compressor up to match the pressure that's in your transfer tanks before you open the valve. It's not an issue when you're filling directly to a partially filled gun or to small bottles that have valves that are one way. They don't open until the compressor matches the pressure that's inside the bottle. Which, with fill bottles, with transfer bottles like this one, you want to use a test plug to plug up the end of its fill whip. And the reason we want to do that is because the gauge itself isn't pressurized until you open the valve. And then we're going to slowly open the valve. And that's going to tell us how much is in the bottle. So that's about 3,900 PSI. I didn't use this too much and I'm going to depressurize the fill. And now I'm going to connect the two and show you what to do. We're going to use this double ended male connector and we're going to put it in the end of the compressor fill whip, then connect it to the transfer bottle or the fill bottle fill whip. Okay, so now we're ready to fill. But with the valve off here, the first thing we're going to be doing is pressurizing the compressor and the fill whips. We want to get this up to 3900 PSI and then once we see that then we're going to crack this valve open. So first we're going to turn on the cooling system. Now the compressor. Okay we're at 3900 PSI. These should match so I'm going to Slowly crack this open. We really shouldn't get any drama. Now the pressure is equal all the way through, and we're going to turn the compressor back on and finish the fill. Okay, that was great. That took minutes. That took about six minutes. It would have taken maybe two hours <laughs> to do the same 600 PSI fill if I were using a booster. So now I turn off the compressor, turn off the cooling system, close the valve on my transfer bottle. Just finger tight. And now I want to bleed from the compressor. There's a whole bunch of moisture and actually oil that bled out here instead of getting pushed all the way through these fill whips and coming out of this bleed valve here. And now I can just disconnect and this bottle's ready to go. And the other thing is, if you're familiar with filling tanks, <laughs> They can get pretty warm if you slam fill them, if you fill them super fast. This thing still feels room temperature. It's a nice steady fill that's going to keep your tank nice and cool, which means that when I get to the range or wherever I'm going to shoot, I'm still going to have 4,500 PSI in here. It's not going to drop down a couple hundred PSI just as the tank cools. For filling a smaller bottle, of course, I need to start out by readjusting my auto off down to 3000 PSI because that's the fill pressure. This gauge is pressurized, doesn't matter because there's no way to pre-equalize, there's no need to pre-equalize actually because the valve in here won't open up until this pressure in the, in the fill whip matches what's in the bottle. So just connect the bottle Turn on the cooling system. Turn on the compressor. I don't know if you can hear me over the compressor, but right now 
the compressor and the fill whip are pressurized. Once it gets to about 1100 PSI, then that valve is going to open up and we'll start to see this gauge come up. No drama. Didn't even notice a change in the sound of the compressor. So this bottle is starting to fill. Excellent. Right at 3000 PSI again. It's not even warm. It's still room temperature, which means that once I get this to the gun and screw it in the back, it's still going to have 3000 PSI. Turn off the compressor, turn off the cooling system, and now we just bleed. And disconnect. We got our fill. Super easy. The last way you might want to use this is to fill directly to a gun. You can do that too. With this Benjamin Airbow, it does have a fill stem that needs to just slide right in to a port and make sure that I have the bleed valve closed. I already have this set to 3000 PSI, which is what the onboard tank is rated for. Turn on the cooling system. Turn on the compressor. And once again, the valve doesn't open until everything is equalized. Then it'll open and start to fill. Okay. Same deal. Turn off the compressor. Turn off the cooling system. And Perfect fill. And again, room temperature. So it's not slam filling your gun. It's not slam filling your tanks. They're going to have a good pressure once you take it off of the compressor and go out in the field or whatever. You're not going to lose PSI as a tank cools down from being filled too quickly. But it's still way faster than using a booster to do the same job. Of course, my preference is to always use a transfer tank fill the transfer tank and then fill the guns off of the transfer tank itself because that'll go a whole lot faster. I've got an air gun that shoots arrows. I've got an air gun that's full auto and belt fed. I've got another one that's powerful enough to take a deer at 150 yards and bust up concrete blocks. I've got yet another one that's accurate enough to shoot a hair off a bug at 25 yards. The world of air guns has a tremendous amount of variety and Air Venturi, I think, is bringing that variety to a lot of people who don't have access to good fills. $1,300 is not cheap by any stretch, but if you're already into air guns, you realize probably that that's not such a bad investment for being able to do your own fills at your house. You don't have to pay for fills and you don't have to go anywhere to get them. If you're in the firearms world like me thinking about air guns, $1,300 does not last that long on a gun range when you're talking about match centerfire ammunition in particular, which I shoot all the time, even your standard range ammunition, you're not going to get a lot of boxes, a lot of cases out of $1,300 before you're having to buy even more ammo. But with a compressor like this, it's once and done. And then you got free fills from there. I've got it linked in the video description below where you can learn more about it and also place your order through Air Gun Depot. Be sure to follow me on Facebook and Instagram. You can see the links right here. And be sure to click right here to subscribe so you can catch my next videos on bows, guns, and other cool stuff like all these air guns. I really appreciate you watching Twang and Bang, and I hope to see you next time.